think another important topic in terms of evaluating patients for chemoimmunotherapy or who have been treated with chemoimmunotherapy is the issue of CAT scans. We've previously for years weren't doing CAT scans to evaluate patients. Now we're doing a lot of them because of the clinical trials that we're doing are, are requiring them. I wonder if anybody would like to comment on what they feel is the value of those, the data that's generated from the CAT scans. and. What don't your don't, don't get that. me started. <laughs> no, um, please. I think from CT California. Scans, so. <laughs> CT scans are overused, uh, and I remember seeing a, a patient who was from uh, uh, Beverly Hills area of uh, Los Angeles, and uh, he brought with his first clinic visit a stack of CT scans where he had them almost every three months, and you can almost flip them and get a movie. And I actually advised him to get away from the radiology paparazzi, but. Um, the problem with CT scans is that oftentimes we're allowing the radiologists to do our work for us. The good thing about CLL is that the lymph node enlargement generally is uh, it's, it's generalized, and so that if you feel lymph nodes that are enlarged in the neck or under the arms, then that's typically the enlargement that you have elsewhere in the body with a few exceptions. Uh, I think that if your clinical exam gives rise to some concern about an abnormality, then of course getting a CT scan makes sense. But to do it as a routine for monitoring patients is, I think, now overused and exposing our patients to unnecessary radiation exposure. Um, unfortunately, some of the CT scanners may not be as well calibrated as others, and so we have to be concerned about the amount of radiation dose that patients may receive at certain centers. Uh, that's a big concern of mine. I think it's a really good point. I mean, I, I do understand to some extent why we need it in trials, particularly uh, if it's trial where data is going to the FDA, right? Because you need an independent review, and the independent review has got to have something to review, and they're not going to be able to review your physical exam, right? So, so I, I get it there, but I couldn't agree with you more. Outside of a clinical trial, I see many patients that have routine CAT scans at certain intervals, and there's completely no, no point to it. Because as you just said, okay, if, you've, if you don't feel anything and they don't have any, uh, they don't have any um, cervical or axillary, you know, it could, does that mean there's no abdominal nodes? Well, there could be some, but who cares, okay? Well, so it doesn't really matter. This has been assessed in the cooperative group trials and also in the German CLL study group. They assessed the question, if they got CT scans versus not, did they change their uh, designation of how they did uh, over the long term, it was very difficult to see an outcome that's different. So one has to worry about what the value of CT scan is in the uh, setting of good clinical monitoring by a well thoughtful, uh, thoughtful physician who's able to examine the patient thoroughly. One of the additional factors that I think really has to be taken into account, and I couldn't agree with the both of you more, is that now that our CLL patients have options beyond chemotherapy, their longevity is going to dramatically increase. So all of a sudden, you know, radiation is a it tends to be a late effect, and now our patients have a, you know, have a future to be thinking about. And so I really think doing away with CT scans as much as possible is certainly important. And I think the same thing. There's a tremendous overuse of PET scanning, which you know is really not necessarily more radiation, but it's the idea that, you know, unless you suspect someone has Richter's you know, a PET scan doesn't really add a lot to the care of the patient as well. And it really is just unnecessary radiation yeah, I agree with Dr. Furman. I think a lot of this is a carryover from treating patients with lymphoma or other cancers other than CLL. The PET scan uptake is pretty nondescript and very low. Unless you're suspecting a patient has been Richter's transformation, uh, that's the only indication I would see for getting a PET scan. Mm -hmm. um, and in that, setting, in that setting, maybe we may want to remind the uh, practicing oncologist that in the, in, if there is suspicious for Richter transformation and a PET CT is done, then the highest, the area with the highest uh, avid, the, uh, the highest uptake is the one where we should try to obtain histological confirmation Absolutely. of uh, Richter. And one more, based on our experience, it's very important that the histological confirmation is done through either an excisional biopsy or a true biopsy and not a simple fine needle aspiration that often is not sufficient in the majority of the cases, not sufficient to make a, a diagnosis of Richter transformation. And when you looked at this, you found, okay, I remember you published on it. Yes. We, there were surprises, right? Other mm -hmm. diagnoses like infections yes. that had nothing to do with Correct. transformation. Mm -hmm. And then something that I think we may need to think about in the future, and it's the numbers are too small to really collect meaningful data, 
But just like in the HIV population, where as the advent of heart therapy increased the number of Hodgkin's disease and diminished the number of diffuse large B cell lymphoma, you know, I have started to see sort of an uptick in the number of Richter's transformations that are Hodgkin's mm -hmm. and not diffuse large B cell, and not large cell lymphoma. So certainly, you know, that dramatically changes how you would manage the case and the clinical outcome.